This footage of a West African soldier giving an ape an AK-47 as a joke before the monkey fires the weapon back at the soldiers is hilarious. No, 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 no! The switch between the soldiers mocking laughter at the seemingly helpless ape to their shocked fear at the ape's proficiency with the weapon is so absurd that you can't help but chuckle. Unfortunately, it's fake. The scene was filmed by 20th Century Fox as a promotion of their 2011 film, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, a film which tells the story of Caesar, an ape with the intelligence of a human that was born from the result of a failed drug experiment. William, the scientist who was responsible for Caesar's birth, was told to euthanize the ape, but he couldn't bear to do it, so instead, he chose to raise Caesar in secret. Caesar lived for years as a human, secluded to his owner's home, isolated from society. This caused him to long for the outside world, wishing to be fully human. However, he was never allowed that freedom. William would only let Caesar out of the house supervised and with a leash around his neck. To William, Caesar was just a smart ape he grew attached to. This eventually led to Caesar wondering whether he was beneath humans, asking William if he considered Caesar to be his pet. William denied him and claimed that they were equal, even though his actions were that of an owner rather than a friend. What Caesar represented was an ape with the intelligence of a human. This gave him distress, being in a world where he was constantly reminded that he was different. This dilemma isn't only present in fiction, but appears repeatedly in real life. There are countless examples of people blurring the line between ape and human. One, which was the main inspiration for the character of Caesar, was another ape called Travis. Travis was born in an animal compound and was then purchased by Sandra and Jerome Herald just three days later. He was suddenly swept from his real mother and raised in a human home. Wearing their clothes, watching TV, he was even featured in advertisements and on the Maury Povich show. To the public, he was a well-socialized ape who behaved even better than most children, but blurring the lines on whether he was an ape or a human would lead to tragedy. On February 6, 2009, Travis had left the house with his mother Sandra's car keys, perhaps because he wanted to go for an afternoon drive. Sharla Nash, Sandra's friend who was with them at the time, wanted to bring Travis back inside, so she picked up Travis's Tickle Me Elmo toy, which was one of his favourites, and waved it in front of her face while approaching him. This triggered a furious outburst from Travis, where he attacked Sharla, dismembering several limbs and tearing her face apart. Sandra, in an effort to save Sharla, hit Travis on the head with a shovel and stabbed him with a knife. She would later admit that this was devastating for her. Stabbing her pet, who was like a child to her, was like stabbing herself. She would eventually call 911 for help, as Sharla lay on the floor, seemingly gone. Stand for 911, where's your emergency? Oh, send the police! What's the problem there? The, the, the chip killed my, my friend! We heard this call come in over the radio. And when we first heard it come in, we couldn't believe that this was taking place. We almost thought it was maybe a prank. Who's killing your friend? My chimpanzee! Oh, your chimpanzee is killing your friend. Yes. He, he ripped your part. Hurry up! Oh my God. We continued to listen on the radio, and then it sounded very serious. And what is the monkey doing? Tell me what the monkey... He, he ripped your face off! Is he, the monkey still by your friend, or can you get close he, to your friend? He, 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 he. <laughs> Once the police arrived, Travis approached their vehicle and attempted to open the door. One officer responded by shooting Travis several times in the chest. Travis would then withdraw back to his home and collapse beside his cage, succumbing to his injuries. Sharla would then be whisked away to a hospital and underwent several surgeries to bring her back from the brink of death. She lost her sight, her hands, and had to have her entire face reconstructed. To some people, this tragedy was inevitable. Travis was an ape. Raising him in a human home was bound to end badly. There were even signs of Travis's primal urges leading to trouble long before the 2009 tragedy. In 2003, Travis had held up traffic, chasing a man on the street for throwing an empty soda bottle through his car window. But police and people who were familiar with Travis did not see him as a public risk. What this 2009 attack shows is that there are severe consequences to treating apes like humans. No matter how much we like to anthropomorphize animals, we must never blur the line between animal and human, or else we ruin the lives 
lives of everybody involved. Another example of this exists in perhaps one of the most unethical infant experiments to happen in American history. The Ape and the Child Experiment of 1932 involved a seven-month-old chimp called Gua who was removed from her mother's cage and was taken to the home of Luella and Winthrop Kellogg. The Kelloggs were a scientist couple who studied eugenics. They've got no connection with the other Kellogg, who also happened to study eugenics, which went ahead to make a cereal brand with the same name. This American couple wanted to answer the question, what would happen if we raised an animal with humans? Before beginning the experiment, the Kelloggs were fascinated with stories of humans being raised in the wild, adapting to their environments and acting like the animals who raised them. If they were born just a few decades later, they'd probably be fans of Tarzan in the Jungle Book. With their joint childish fascination, they made a newborn kid called Donald, and the first thing they decided to do was to raise him in an experimental setting side by side with Gua. This experiment involved recording the observed differences between the baby human and ape, while putting them through several smaller experiments to see how they would react. One such experiment involved hitting the two infant skulls with a spoon in order to determine which one's bones were denser. Perhaps they should have tested the density of their own skulls before thinking that was a good idea. Another experiment, which is intended to test the difference in reflex between Gua and Donald was performed by sitting the two of them in front of a camera and, once they were calm, firing a gun behind them while filming their reactions. You wonder how they got away with this? They repeated this experiment several months later, but included five other children ranging between the ages of 17 months and eight and a half years. If this wasn't bad enough, the experiment also recorded the impacts on Donald's development, especially with his speech. Because Donald spent his developing months stuck at home under observation, his speech predictably became stunted. But it took a while for his parents to notice this as they were too preoccupied trying to teach Gua how to speak. The experiment continued for nine months and was abruptly ended once Luella Kellogg noticed her son's stunted development. The impact of the experiments on Gua was tragic. She would die of pneumonia less than a year after she was kicked out of the Kellogg's home. After they ruined her development through their unethical experiment, she couldn't even live past the age of three. The impact on their son Donald was also tragic. Although he seemed to have recovered from the stunted development, growing up studying psychiatry, his life would eventually end at the age of 44 by his own hands. No doubt in part due to his questionable upbringing by his unethical parents. The story of the experiment became public discourse for several years after the results were published. People were rightfully outraged at the Kelloggs for their grossly neglected for raising of Donald and Gua. This story further attests to the fact that human strange fascination with monkeys, if left unchecked, will inevitably lead to tragedy. It can sometimes be surprising how close apes are to humans. Our fascination with them can be a blessing if we make sure to remember our boundaries and don't blur the line between human and ape. So please, don't give the ape a gun. They'll probably hurt you and themselves in the process.